Hey, what's up, guys? Welcome back to another episode of The Mental Golf Show. I'm your host, Josh Nichols. And on today's episode, we talk about removing anxiety and nerves and worry and exactly how to do that. It's not easy, but there is a way. All right, hope you enjoy. What is the root cause of nervousness, anxiety, fear, and worry? Everyone wants to know where these things come from. Everyone knows what these emotions feel like, but almost nobody knows or has even thought about where they originate. Well, let's try to work through it. Think of it in a real life situation. When you show up to a tournament and you feel nervous, why is that? Well, it's probably because you wanna do well. You want to win. You want to not fail. You want to impress others. What's the common word in all of these motivations? Think about it for a sec. It's the word want. That's not what you expected. You expected it to be like failing or winning or impressing. But it's the word want. You want something that you don't have. You expect yourself to gain something. You are in a get mentality. Well, of course I want to do well in a tournament. What's the point of playing if I wouldn't want to do well? And there arises your nervousness, anxiety, and fear of failure. Now that we've figured out where they come from, why don't we get to removing them? In order to remove nerves, you must change your motivation. You have to change from get to give. You have to change from wanting to do well in a tournament, uh and that being your only motivation. You have to change that from get, like what can I get? What can I show up and receive? You have to change it to give. So why does giving rather than getting remove nervousness? Think of the last time you gave someone a gift. Were you nervous? Just think about it for a sec. We're about to come upon Christmas and there's gonna be a lot of gifts. So when you give someone a gift, Are you nervous? Well, if you really think about it, you probably were nervous. If you think back to last Christmas when you gave uh, that person that gift that you really wanted to give them, you knew they would like. Well, you probably were nervous because you were probably hoping that they would like the gift. You wanted their approval, admiration. You even wanted to see them enjoy it. So even in the act of giving, you are still hoping to get something. The only part of that scenario that made you nervous was the hope of getting. You wanted, just just the act of seeing them enjoying it is still wanting to get something. You're, You're wanting that good feeling of seeing them enjoy it. It's okay, I'm not casting it as a horrible thing, but you can't claim to only be giving when you really are trying to get something. If you took away that what you were trying to get, if you removed the transaction aspect, you give something but also expect something in return, there would be no nerves. You would simply be freely giving without wanting anything in return. Now you might say, how do I show up to a tournament that I want to win and give instead of get? What does giving even mean in the context of golf? Okay, well, what is something that you can give during a tournament? What is the one thing that you have control over at all times? That's kind of hard to answer out of the blue, so let's ask it from the opposite side. What don't you have control over? Well, you can't control other people, the weather, the condition of the golf course, how well other people are going to play, You know, the cut line, the winning score, uh, the, you know, the way your clubs are acting. uh, All these things are variables. Um, You know, just the minute amount of degrees of difference of a club face that can cause a ball to go right or left or higher or lower. These things are just, there's so many variables that truthfully you can't control. You can't make everything perfect. So what's left after all of that is stripped away? You take away all those outside factors, all those things that you can't really control, what's left? Well, 
yourself. The one thing we didn't mention in all of that is yourself. You are the only thing that you can control. So you can only give of what you already have, and you are the only resource that you really have. You can't, you, all these other factors, you, you can only expect from. You can't control, you can't give of. They're not, you don't have some source that you can reach from and, and produce weather or produce perfect conditions or produce other golfers playing how you want them to or scores. All The only resource you have, the only well you can draw from is yourself. So you ask, how do I give of myself in a tournament? By simply removing get, by removing want. No more hope of receiving something. No more expectation of an outcome. Once you stop wanting, nerves have no other choice but to disappear. So giving of yourself on the golf course looks something like a painter or a musician or a writer. When they move completely out of their own way and stop worrying about what they are going to produce and therefore receiving something from their art, the art naturally flows from them. They give themselves to the art. They become the art. This is, it's kind of a, you know, a wishy-washy, um, I don't know, out there kind of way to think about this. And I know a lot of golfers are kind of concrete thinkers. But if you look at it like, if you look at yourself as an artist and and what you produce is, you know, golf shots and uh, your score, you think of that as your art, then, then if you, if you're purely giving of yourself and you're not hoping to get something in return, then it's just fun. Then it's just art. Then it's just, you know, playing that jazz music freely. And un until you're expecting the crowd to admire you or expecting the critics to like your painting or expecting the audience to like your play or your movie, those things are what produce nerves. And those expectations and hopes and fears, that's what produces nervousness and anxiety. But once you remove that and you're just giving and you're just saying, this is what I want. To produce. This is what I have. This is what comes from out deep with inside of me, and and here it is. And you're just giving, and you're not expecting anything in return. You don't have a hope of a score. You don't want to get a trophy. You don't care about the cut line. You don't care about how other people are playing. All these factors that that are external, you remove them and you just simply give of what you have that day in that tournament, that's when nerves and, and anxiety can disappear. So give of yourself completely every shot. Immerse yourself in the perfect execution of every individual shot and stop wanting something in return. So if you, if you show up to a tournament and and your your only job that day is to completely commit to the execution of every individual shot you won't you you won't care about result you won't be nervous because all you care about is the next shot and perfectly executing it and and where some people break down and where this argument breaks down for some people is Perfectly executing a shot is the ball, you know, going in the hole or going exactly where they aim, and that's a result. But perfect execution doesn't have to mean the outcome or the result of the shot. Perfect execution, to me, means perfectly going through the process of the shot. You, everything that you could control, your... Uh, your mentality before you hit the shot, your trust of your uh, in your ability, your 
uh, your mental pre-shot routine and and you're you're freely letting yourself swing without uh, being encumbered by you know swing thoughts or mechanics or or those kind of things and then once the ball's gone you're your complete acceptance and zero judgment of yourself. That, to me, is perfect execution of the shot. And if you do that over a long enough term, and, and in between tournaments you're practicing and you're, you're working on the things you're struggling on, then over the course of the long haul, your results probably will be good, and you will get, as a, just as a natural result of how much you gave and it's so hard to to go back to the gift example it's so hard to just give 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 and never expect in return so let's say you went eight christmases and you always bought everybody a gift always and some people even more because you you really cared about those people and you wanted those people to be really happy and you just, you purely, you completely set aside your own desire to get something in return. Just imagine the difficulty of the over and over another Christmas where you didn't get something. You didn't receive anything in return. How hard it would be to say, you know what, I don't care. I'm not worried about it. I just want to give. But this is what's required to remove nervousness and anxiety. So to say that it's easy is not true. Uh, To say that it takes a very long time of an absolute commitment where you, you just set aside your own desires for a very long time, now that's actually how it works. And that's hard. I'm not gonna sit here and say, oh yeah, just, just give and stop getting and you'll play better. Or, and you, you won't be nervous anymore. And that's just, that's not how it works. Um, if it was super easy and, and people could just set aside their own desires and, and, and actually receive something in return quickly, then everyone would do it. But the way it is, is that you have to say, okay, over the next year, over the next six months, over the next six years, I'm going to remove my desire for getting anything. I'm going to purely give of myself. I'm going to analyze what I need to work on. Um, and I'm going to go to working on those things really hard. I'm going to make practice really hard and difficult and specific and deliberate and intentional and stressful and practice is going to be really thorough and productive. And then I'm going to show up to a tournament and just give give of what I have, give of what I I have prepared, give of what of the arrows that I've put in my quiver. Is that the right word, quiver? So that that is all I can produce is what I have stored up. You know, there's a a, a concept from the Bible, you reap what you sow. So you, um, so in an analogy or an example of farming, you, you know you're not going to get anything for a very long time, but you continue to water, you plant, I don't know anything about farming in case you can't tell, but you, you know, you plant seeds, you water, you, uh, you hope for sunshine, you water more, water, fertilize, water, fertilize, uh, you know, feed feed however you do it and it's a very long time till you till you reap what you have sown but you know you you set aside your desire to get for a very long time from now and you simply give and and over the course of that time um you you might get something eventually but it's it's in the process of setting that aside that you know, you nerves and anxiety just disappear because you know that's in the future. I'm not worried about it right now. I'm simply producing what I can right now. And to go back to golf, it's it's 
sewing, 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 hard work, patience, um, intentionally tackling the things that you struggle with, intentionally making the things that you're good at better. It's about deliberately setting forth with a plan and always saying, you know what, I'm going to, I'm going to receive what I'm due whenever it comes and I'm not worried about it. And it's hard. It takes a long time, but the only way for you to not be nervous or anxious is to remove what you want and only give of yourself. And I, I know it has happened with myself. I can speak from personal experience that I, I've played tournaments where I showed up and I said, you know what, this is simply a test of how much I've worked and whatever happens, happens. And it doesn't matter to me. I'm not worried about it. Uh, all I'm worried about is giving of, of what I have prepared. And after the tournament, I'll analyze it, and I'll get back to work on what I struggled with, and, um, and then I'll go play the next tournament and give completely of myself. And over the course of a season, I'll look back and say, you know, that was pretty good, or, or that I could have done better. And, um, and it, it just, uh, it's a long process. And, um, and I know, I know it can be discouraging to say it's a long process, but uh, be encouraged because if you stick this out long enough, you you will win. You will receive something. Uh, but at the same time, you have to not want to receive something. It's really hard. I, it's nothing that I've conquered. Don't don't look at me like oh Josh has it figured out or he knows he knows exactly how it goes and. He's won, and um, not at all. Nothing, uh, nothing in life is perfect. Nothing in the life that we live now is perfect. So, um, it's just a matter of setting it aside, your your wants and your desires. Um, for uh, and replace that with giving. Uh, yeah. So uh, that's my thoughts for today, and I, I, I hope they could help you out. Uh, yeah, so thanks for listening. Thanks for listening to this episode of The Mental Golf Show. If you liked it, I'd love it if you subscribed. And if you want some more, you can go to joshnicholsgolf.com. Or I would love to get in touch with you. Just send me a text, 336-399-1825. All right, catch you next time.